Complex News. I'm Pierre Simpson, joined here by three stars of the newest Griselda Records film, Conflicted. I'm joined by Deuce, Benny the Butcher, West Side Gun. Fellas, how y'all feeling? I'm good. good. What you? Good. Excited. Wonderful, man. Wonderful. For man. sure. For sure. Time is I've been, uh, I, of course, I've been locked into the film, man. Very impressed. Very impressed with the storytelling. Impressed to get the scene of what life is like in Buffalo because I feel like we all have this perception and it, and it's probably negative from the outside looking in as far as like what life is actually like there. So first question, Deuce, what was your mindset whenever you created this film and crafted it? Um, You know, this is my second or third time around. You know what I mean? Right. Anytime I write, it comes from a real place. You know what I mean? So it's almost like our imitating life, however you want to say it. And that I was in that space right there. I wanted to kind of paint a picture of what a young man goes through coming home from prison and the afflictions and how life pulls at him in every different direction from his homeboys trying to get him to get back into the game. From you know, do we get a job? Do we start hustling? So I just wanted to show the the, the, the confliction and the, the turmoil that a man goes through when he comes home from being in the penitentiary. Benny, from your perspective in West Side too. How did you all get in contact with Deuce? How did everything come together to make the film whole? And you know, Deuce, Deuce an OG from the hood. Yeah. Who always been artistic and always been like a, a sharp person, a militant person. And you know what I mean? Like he said, this is third time around. So he put me in on some earlier things that he was doing. Yeah. And so when when they got when, it, when we got the opportunity to do something like this, he put me back in, you know what I'm saying? So uh I always, I always looked at him as a as an individual who was sharp in his field so I fell right under his wing and you know I'm saying that's what we got. Yeah man like you know I got up on Deuce because uh the pure series, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, mm -hmm. this is second, third time around. So you know he did the pure stories you know, based on Buffalo and it was just it was real street. It was real Buffalo, you know what I'm saying? And um you know like I was blessed he put me in, you know what I'm saying? And, there's other record labels throughout the years who kind of dabbled in film, whether it's No Limit, whether it's Rockefeller, um, the list goes on. Who was a big inspiration as far as the blueprint to kind of get the, the ball rolling when it came to like hopping into the movie game? Um, I, I, you know, of, of course, you know, we, we, we look at the blueprint of, of what Rockefeller did and what Master P did and all those great, you know, individuals. Um, but I think for me, the inspiration was trying to fill that void from our hometown and doing something that's never been done before. I was looking at what Wes was doing. I was looking at what Benny was doing. You know, and I actually wrote this movie actually for Benny playing the main character. We had some early conversations and you know, everything just exploded for me. And he just, you know, he was just such a solid dude and he just stayed down. You know yeah. what I mean? But my, my inspiration came from just watching what them boys was doing. What was the process like of tackling those acting roles and just having developed characters and really just immersing yourself in the storyline? Benny, I'll start with you. Uh, for me, you know, like you said, I'm, I'm new to this. So for me, I was really feeding off the, the energy that was on the set. And you know what I'm saying? Just blessed to be in a good position. It was people like Deuce, you know what I'm saying? My boy, Adian, you know what I'm saying? And guys like that who, who who, who already was deep into this. So I'm just feeding out their energy and I'm and I'm bringing it with them. But it was definitely different. I was uh, Benny, Benny, try, Benny trying to be humble, man. You know, he the next Denzel, <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. How did how did you channel that process of, of making your film debut in the feature level? Natural, man. <laughs> you know, it was just, it was, it was easy for me. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, man, I, I I love my part, man. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 the it's the part that man people be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I, I enjoyed it, man. You know, we, we did it right down in the Perry projects. You know what I'm saying? They um they're banded now, but you know, that's some of the projects from Buffalo. And um, you know, the scene is dope, man. You know what I mean? For sure, Deuce. You know, I, I was mentioning earlier about this perception that some people have of Buffalo. A lot of times people may just look at the bills and see some of the footage they show from games and just think that's all that Buffalo is. So from your perspective, when you were writing this film, what percentage would you say was actual reality when it comes to life in Buffalo for, um, you know, your upbringing? You know, and I don't want to sound cliche, but it was it was 100% accurate. You know right. what I mean? Like we, I'm not writing from a space where I'm guessing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 
we really was we really was moving around like that. We really we seen these things. I, I seen my friends, you know, go to go, go to penitentiary and do football numbers. You know, what I mean, I had a ten year sentence. You know what I mean? So um, I know when I came home from prison, I didn't want to go back to doing the things that I was doing. So I had to figure something else out. Right. And I know when I came home, it was a bunch of people pulling me from many different directions. Like I could have been right back in possession. You know what I mean? But I didn't want to, I didn't, I know, I read the end of that book. I know how that book ends. So I was like, you know what? I ain't, I'm going to try a different route this time. But trying to go to work and do the things and um, like, you know, do the right things, mm-hmm. it'd be hard sometimes. You know what I mean? Cause, you know, people be shy. People, and I'm used to living a certain type of way. And it's like, man, it's just a turmoil with inside me. The demons that I'm fighting, trying not to go back to the, you know, go back to the foolishness. And I just wrote from that perspective. So I think it was 100% accurate. Man, you know, it's, it's wild because we talk about like, uh, the story of the guy in Conflicted, like all three of us is, is felons. We all, every last one of us went through this story before. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's so relatable as well. You know what I'm saying? We, we all did time. We all had to come back and do that, those same type of warehouse jobs customer service, telemarketing jobs, you know, and, and the homies are still in, in, in that life and you still with your homies. So, yeah. you know, I had to go through that. So I think that's another thing as well is like, you know, how a lot of people might, uh, uh, you know, even with the music, you know, a lot of people, a lot of stories is made up. A lot of people just want to portray these roles, but in actuality, like this is the things that we really went through in real life. Westside alluded to it a little earlier about how each of you have done stints. And I thought it was very important. The opening scene, Deuce, you said it in jail and you had this conversation between an OG and your character. What made that scene so so important for you to start off the film? You know, um, I didn't I didn't go into that, but I that was actually a real conversation. Like I really? was with a um an OG man and he had life he ain't never come home mm. and at the time i was with him he already had 20 years in and mm. he told me he was like yo you've been blessed to you know practice this dean in the free world and you'll get another chance he said me i'm gonna die behind these walls mm. but i'm all right with that yeah. but i want my life to be as perfect as possible while i'm behind these walls he told me when you go home and you get your life right and that always stuck with me you know what i mean so yeah. that that scene right there was very important to me because you know he played a pivotal part in my change. And you said, don't go back into that environment and get trapped. We need you out there. I believe in you. Our law believes in you. I just need you to believe in yourself again. Most definitely, most definitely. You know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of time OGs take that as a responsibility when they see the young dudes coming there. You know what I'm saying? Young dudes coming there on bullshit that they was just in, just throwing in the streets. And definitely, I uh, caught my first case, my fake case when I was 18. So I went in there very young, a baby. You know, dudes had to school me, tell me what not to do, or who not to hang with. You know, I, I, you know I mean, I needed it all. I needed the manual, not the prison manual. I needed it from the, in, the prisoners. You know what I'm saying? They gave me the game on how to move around. Man, free slide green, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was saying, you know. That was that was that was the OG. You know what I'm saying? He, he he from Buffalo too. Buffalo legend, street legend. You know what I'm saying? So I um you know it's, you know we I'm pretty sure like you know in, in in my life prison is like the worst thing and the best thing that happened to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful for every day I was in there, even though of course it's prison, but just the education, the knowledge. You can't buy that, you know what I mean? Just just to learn how to carry yourself as a man, you know, think ahead of the game, you know what I'm saying? I think if it, if it wasn't for prison, it wouldn't even be a West Side Gun. And I think the things that, you know, God has allowed me to do now, I knew four of them brothers. It's like I say, a lot of them brothers not coming home no more. And I'm not no better than them brothers. You know what I mean? I could easily be in them positions, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I gotta be the voice box. I gotta get them, I gotta get them something to be proud of. You know, and we are giving brothers. So, you know, I got brothers that's coming home that's been down for 10, 20, uh, 25 years. And they coming home and they looking forward to getting 
you know, being a part of what I got going on. There's people that's in the movie who came home from doing a lot of time and didn't couldn't figure it out. And this is giving them hope. So it's like, man, I'm I'm just thankful that I'm in this position to to be a vessel. <laughs> Shit don't work like that, boy. Man, come on, man. You know me. Let me hit you back though. I see you made it. How you? I got something for you. That's you. Good looking, fam. Good shit. You looking enough at me now, huh? Hmm. That's what I'm saying, cuz. It's been a day or two. Let me know. I appreciate you, but I ain't with it no more. Yo, how you not with it and you hunt? You told me all the shit that I know. Fam, I get these crackers too much time, bro. I'm not giving them another day. For somebody that, that, that gets out, how tough how tough is that conflict of not going back into that world? Again, it's very difficult. Yeah. Because, you know, you come back into the environment just because you changed, the people you left haven't changed. It's been, it's been business as usual. Right. You know what I mean? And then, you know, if you have a younger cousin or a nephew or whoever, you know, they may have um, idolized or look forward to the old you coming home. Mm -hmm. And then when you coming home on, on, on something different, it's like, that's a confliction as well. You know what I mean? So it's like, um, you know, this is this is everyday life, man. Yeah. Well, I wanted I wanted to come across I wanted to come across as authentic. So I uh I channel like my real situations, you know what I'm saying? Coming home and not want to be a part of everything that the homies got going on, but you know, the homies got something special going on. It's not nothing regular. They got something real special going on in the streets and they want you they want you to be a part of it. They feel like they owe you this. If you did the time and they and they feel like this they feel like they mainly really helped build that for you. And for you not to come home and, and get a part of that. You know, it, it's almost something that they take personal and they, they they could never understand it. So no matter what uh he was trying to say, my character Nick wasn't trying to hear it because you know he, he didn't he didn't just see what his big cousin seen. He didn't come from where he was coming from. He'd been in the streets. So I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, had that had that sense of like just all out in the streets, nothing to live for. Like this is what it's about. Right, right. That temptation is crazy. Like if if you still hanging out with the homies and they wearing jewelry and they wearing designer and they driving good and they popping bottles and you know they they live in that life. It's like man, you know what I'm saying. And and I mean I know me personally. I violated. I had to go back to jail because I, I I wanted that again. So I right. know. <laughs> experience. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, you know, I wanted that custom chain on my neck. I wanted <laughs> something. I wanted something off the lot. Guess what? Another eighteen months for your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Benny, what, what would you? What would you hope fans to take away from conflicted? Man, honestly, <clears throat> I hope fans take away that my boy Deuce got a dope pen. You know what I'm saying? He's creative. He's a visionary. You know what I'm saying? Because he got more work. I hope they take that. You know what I'm saying? And, and Westside Gun is, a, is also a visionary and we could put anything together and, and it's a hood classic. I hope they take, I hope, you know what I'm saying? I hope that's what the census is for this because, you know, we worked hard on this and and it's a blessing to be a part of it. And like, I have been humble. Like, man, I'm, I'm acting my ass off in this shit. I'm taking acting classes now and everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm doing my shit. So I just I hope. I hope people see all the effort and the work that we put into this, you know what I'm saying? More than anything. For sure. So I, I take it this won't be your, your last role. We're going to see more roles from, from Benny oh, Butcher. Yeah, of course. Of course. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Deuce, yeah, like like Benny mentioned, your, your pen is solid, man. You did a, an immaculate job on, on this film. So I have to give Thank you kudos you. to that before I, I get your takeaways. But for you, as the this is your baby. Uh, what do you hope fans take away from Conflicted? Um, I hope fans... Just real, like everything comes down to decision making. You know what I mean? Good or bad. You know, we have to live with the, with the decisions that we make. But for the overall picture, I just hope that, you know, the world just realize how much talent that's, that's in Buffalo. You know, we create opportunity, not just for ourselves, but for the people that's around us, whether on screen or behind the camera. You know what I mean? I just want to, you know, uh, just sh share this light with the world. What's our gun? Benny the Butcher, Deuce. I appreciate y'all stopping by with us here. Boom, 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 boom.
Ah, what you call? Yeah, have a good I one. Got, I ain't got no ad lib yet. You ain't got one yet? Yeah, yeah. yeah. a couple more people. We'll have one. A couple more movies. We're going to have one for sure. Eric, you know you're my favorite interviewer, man. You got that voice, man. You know you're my boy, man. I appreciate you, my brother. Listen, y'all got to put me in the film, too. What's up? No, definitely, man. You talk to the right there. You, you got the man who put me man, in the let, show. Let, right let, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, fellas, y'all stay safe. I appreciate y'all, man. Bless you. Yes, sir. Yeah.